the, obviously the government business is important for Palantir, but that's not why I'm in this stock. I'm in this stock because I look at Palantir as a company that I think every Fortune 500 company, every large organization, and maybe even every mid-sized organization over the next few years is going to have to at least consider bringing Palantir into their business model. And if they do that, I think Palantir is going to be incredibly sticky, and I think companies are going to use Palantir for potentially years to go in the future, if not decades to go in the future, right? Because Palantir signs these long-term contracts of three, five, you know, sometimes even longer, you know, years out. And so I think it's going to be a very, very sticky business model. So that's why I'm personally in this stock more than the government side of the business is because of the commercial side of the business. In, in previous quarters, Palantir had projected annual growth of 30% or better through 2025. Glazer confirmed that the company is not repeating that forecast and results announced Monday. So, you know, um, that's an important matter there. Basically, the company, I, do they even plan to grow 30% a year? I don't know. You know, um, if you take that away, maybe they're not. Maybe now they're expecting something like 25%, 23%. 27%, whatever, right? But at the end of the day, like these numbers add up over time, right? And so if you're running a long-term projection model for Palantir, let's say you're running a three-year, five-year, seven-year, 10-year projection model, well, there's a big difference between a 30% growth rate and let's say a 23% growth rate or a 25% growth rate. You have to adjust all your numbers and all your numbers are gonna be substantially less over a three, five, seven, 10-year span, like substantially less. Um, is a, it, 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 makes a massive difference between a 23% growth rate and a 30% growth rate. So now that Wall Street is going to have to go back to the drawing boards in regards to Palantir and run their models and things like that and try to figure out, um, you know, is this a good deal at $9 or is it really only a good deal at $5 or $7 or, or $8, right? Um, or $10 or $15. So that, that's going to be kind of a process we, ha we have to work through in regards to Palantir now. For long-term bulls on Palantir, right? Um, you got to ask yourself if this company grows at 23%, let's say a year, or 25% a year, instead of the 30% that was projected, right? Are you still a happy shareholder? Do you believe this company's net income over the next five years is going to still get to a place that makes this market cap look like a joke, right? Which if you think Palantir's net income over the next five years is going to get to, you know, let's say $2 billion or more, then today's market cap looks like a complete joke. And, you know, Palantir is likely going to have to climb to like an $80 billion to $100 billion type market cap if that was a situation. Now, if you're only projecting that, let's say five years out, Palantir is doing like 500 mil net income, then uh, it's not so attractive, right? Because then you're, you're basically paying a, a 40, that'd be like, what, a 40 uh, PE for five years out. That's not attractive. So, you know, you got to run, you got to run your own models here and kind of figure out if there's a deal. Now, if you, you think this company's still getting to a couple billion dollars of net income over the next five years or so, then, you know, obviously this is a pretty good opportunity and you should welcome shares being lower in the short term because you'll just get to pick up a lot more shares for a lot cheaper price, obviously, which is an ideal situation for any long-term shareholder who wants to build a major position in a company like that. So just kind of some food for thought.